Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, good morning, everybody. And uh, thank you very much for attending. Uh, I'm delighted to be here. I didn't anticipate quite so many of you. And I hope that's because you're interested and not because of the free buns waiting on the trolley outside. <laughs> um, I'd like to share something with you this morning. And I'm not referring to hepatitis. No, I'm, uh, I'm referring to the Velvet Paw of Asquith novels, which is a series of fiction books associated with a brand new genre of fiction. This genre is called New Fable and is high adventure for older young adults. It's uh, entirely anthropomorphic, having no human characters at all. Instead, it has cats and dogs acting like people. And um, I gave a presentation on New Fable not long ago, uh, which uh, didn't go very well. Um, people were quite mean about it, actually, and, uh, and someone threw a shoe at me. But the point is that New Fable's flavour of anthropomorphism gives rise to bizarre behaviours, absurd situations and innovative storytelling. Now, the Velvet Paw of Asquith novels, also known as the Duven books, follow the adventures of the cat Oscar Teabag Duven, who's both a poet and a spy, and who, and this is the book's storyline, is thrown into international jet-setting adventures involving greed, espionage, and the odd foray into professional cheese shaping. Now importantly, although the characters are bizarre, the story world is recognisable as our own. But with eccentric behaviours as the norm, rather than the exception, convention is not only turned upside down, but some of its loose bits fall off. They could perhaps be described as the wind in the willows meets James Bond, but with far less success. None, in fact. But the bottom line is, and this is what I was trying to get across before a shoe was thrown at me, that there have been no books written about poetically inclined cats being forced to save the world. And there's a very good reason for this. It's a stupid premise. But here's the thing. New Fable renders the stupid credible and the absurd becomes really quite wonderful. I was recently accosted in a laundromat by my mother who'd read a chapter and told me that no one would want to read about animals and no one would be able to get through my turgid convoluted sentences, which is unfortunate considering it's only the convoluted sentences that hold the book's plots together. But the point is that the books wouldn't work if the characters were human, much like my mother in fact. There is a gratuitousness to the Duven books that is only possible in a world unrestrained by conventional society. For example, food fights erupt in expensive restaurants, there are bakers who make buns with petrol, and clinically blind bus drivers who don't. Cathedrals are built entirely upside down and palaces have rooms so large that there are indoor horizons. Governments are overthrown by fiddling with stationery and luxurious department stores are ruined by animals obsessed with cushions, full-length dress mirrors and masses of sticky tape. Concierges cake walls with aerosol manure Dead animals get carted around the place by disintegrating taxis and cities are either so exclusive they don't even know about themselves or so dreadful that tourists get cameras shoved up their bottoms. This sort of ludicrousness, ladies and gentlemen, is only possible with New Fable. And these are the Velvet Paw of Asquith novels. Frankly, Fluffy just got dangerous. But more than this, the Duven books are exemplified by what I term polyauthorism, where authors broaden their creativity beyond the written word to give their readers greater means of immersion into their story world through music, through artwork and video. The internet is a new laboratory, ladies and gentlemen, and authors need to be the new experimenters. Which brings us to Duven Muzak, a sort of vintage retro electro music written specifically to describe the book's characters places and scenes, and more recently, an evolution of Duven Muzak called Fable Pop, which takes narrative passages from the books, which are spoken over the music in a really dreadful sort of talentless hip-hop that doesn't even rhyme. Polyauthorism insists upon audiobooks, which is, of course, a form of podcasting. 
In the case of the Velvet Poor of Asquith novels, there is also music from the hotels featured in the books and the audiobooks. There are lots of hotels in the Duven books because the adventures are international and quite tiring. Paintings in a style described as extractionism are also available. They are vibrant and colourful in the same way the books are, and again aim to complement the stylistic characteristics of New Fable, in this case visually. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The Velvet Poor of Asquith novels are here. They're new and innovative. They're unpredictable and vibrant. But most importantly, they're looking for an audience. A as it appears am I. A lot of people have left, haven't they? Thank you for your attention. I hope there are some buns left. <laughs> Give me to go. I can go. Give me to say. I can answer something. Well, there's only one person. Well, he's gone now. Are there any buns left? Mm -hmm.